year, hundreds of people report seeing strange lights in the sky, UFOs, and even flying saucers. But have they had a close encounter with aliens from outer space? Or can these sightings be explained logically? Let's see what you think. Could be planes, helicopters, anything. People just make them up, I think. No, I don't believe in UFOs. I think they're um, British and they're sending men into space to see how far they can go. To see if you can travel in outer space faster. And it could be a psychological experiment. Find out what happens when we see a UFO. Yeah, I believe in UFOs because there's so many planets in space that there must be another planet inhabited. My dad was a pilot once and uh, his, his friend, it was, he was once looking at a radar and he, he saw something that is invisible, went past. It was a sort of a really fast. No, I don't believe in UFOs. I just think the Lord of rubbish. I do, because I think there's life on the planet. With me now is Jenny Randalls, Britain's only full-time UFO investigator and 11-year-old Terry Okinson, who says that she's seen a UFO. Now, first of all, Jenny, can you tell us how you go about investigating UFOs? Well, the first thing we ask people to do if they've seen something is to fill out one of these forms, which ask them all questions about where it was in the sky and what time of day it was, things we need to know so that we can ask airports and weather centres and things like that who might have information which can help us find out if there are any aeroplanes or weather balloons or various things which can be mistaken for UFOs nearby. Right. What do most cases turn out to be then? Uh, at night, usually stars or meteors that are flashing through the sky. During the day, usually aeroplanes or helicopters. About nine out of every ten UFO sightings we find an explanation for. Have there been any cases that have really baffled you? There are some, such as this piece of movie film which was taken by a man who was traveling to the job which he had uh, helping to design houses and he saw this orange light through the side window of the car and managed to get uh, some movie film of it and some children in a nearby, nearby school who were playing in the school playground saw it come straight overhead hovering and spinning around so it's a very good case and we were never able to find out what it was well, what did you do to try to find we, it? We took the film to have it analysed by the big laboratories of Kodak and they were able to show definitely that it isn't a fake, it's a real piece of film of something that was in the sky. And we looked into all possibilities about aeroplanes and things like that, but there wasn't anything which should have been there. It's a UFO, yes. It's a mystery. Yes. <laughs> now, Terry, you say that you've seen a UFO. Where was this? Well, I was taking a friend home. Well, I was playing with her as well. And I saw a bright light in the sky, and I told her, and she said, don't take no notice of it, just hurry up and then quickly get back home. So I did that, and I told my mum about it, and she reported it. Oh, wow. Mm. Jenny, um, back to you. What about, um, you have done so many investigations, you've written 12 books and everything, but what I want to know is, do they really exist? Well, UFOs, which means unidentified flying objects, means something that people can't explain. Yes, they do exist. If you're talking about, are they little green men in spaceships, well, that's a different question, and we haven't got the proof of that. It's a possibility, but there are other possibilities, too, that we're looking at, scientific answers, uh, which one day will probably just be accepted as the same as we accept all kinds of scientific things now. It's mm -hmm. tomorrow's science, we think. Even photographs of UFOs are hard to prove because they're so easy to fake. So see if you can spot the difference between some so-called genuine UFO photos and some that we have cheated by throwing objects up into the air and photographing them. Jenny, would you like to talk us through some of them here? Well, this particular picture was taken a long time ago. It was taken uh, in 1950 by two farmers in America and it's been put into a computer and they've been able to do all kinds of clever things with it and show that this is really a very big object about 30 foot across a long way away from the camera so we don't have anything that looks like that that really is flying so as far as we're concerned it's a UFO. Mm, right and what about this one? Well this was taken by a police officer who said he was cleaning his camera in Rochdale and he took, saw this thing as it just flashed past his bedroom window. But um, someone pointed out to us that if you think about that being a policeman's helmet and that being the badge which is shining the sun off it, it looks just like he could have thrown his helmet out of the window <laughs> and photographed that. We asked him, he said no, but, well, we remain open-minded Do you about get that. many people trying to think? <laughs> yes, yeah. some do, uh, but we can usually spot them. We've got very clever methods now. They can't fool us very easily. Right, and the sun? Well, this these are the ones you see in books, isn't mm, that right? Yeah, these are the sort of UFOs that you expect UFOs to look like. These were taken by a man in Switzerland who says he's seen hundreds of them. And he's had aliens come round for tea as well. 
Uh, unfortunately, he also had little models in his garage which looked exactly like these, which he'd thrown into the rubbish bin. And when investigators got there and pointed that out, he said, ah, oh, well, he made the models based on his photographs and he didn't need them anymore because the photographs were so good. Well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> right, OK. Well, UFOs still remain an unexplained mystery. Thanks very much, Jenny and Terry, for coming along today.